Hey everyone, it's Brad at Hope to Prosper. Now I'm up here on Patriot Hill. I hope you can hear me. Wind's blowing pretty good. Um, just out on a hike today. It's a beautiful spring day at the beach. The rain stopped and uh, just out on a normal Tuesday enjoying my day with Bailey. Bailey, say hi. <laughs> there you go. She's camera shy today. Okay, thanks for coming along and I'll tell you what I have on my mind. Have you ever dreamed about driving away from your job and just never coming back? I know I have a lot of times. Uh, especially I had this one job way back in 2007. And uh, I hated it. I mean, I used to love my career. But this one job, this one nightmare job, I just hated it. Uh, the boss was rude and arrogant. He would yell at everybody from his office. Uh, management was shady. You know, my paychecks would bounce. Uh, they didn't have direct deposit because uh, they never paid their tax impounds, their payroll tax impounds. And they had a 401k, but then the money disappeared. <laughs> and so luckily I wasn't in that one. Uh, but a lot of people lost their retirement. And there was never any reviews or raises. So basically whatever they hired you in at, uh, they just only paid you that uh, until you threatened to quit. And then they maybe would give you a raise or let you quit. So... It was a horrible job. It was a nightmare. So I just dreamed about leaving the workforce. You know, I, I just would sit in my desk and think, man, I, I can't live like this. Um, and I thought I was just going to, you know, leave the workforce forever, but I couldn't do that. You know, I had a family to feed. I was a single income dad and a mortgage to pay and all that. So instead, I just quit and got another job. And that was great because my next job was awesome, probably the best job of my career. And I quickly forgot about escaping the 9-to-5 grind, and uh, I just lived it up and enjoyed my new job. Until about 15 years later, uh, when I got laid off from my last job. And thankfully by then, you know, I'd saved up enough money to retire, and I never looked back. And uh, So it's been over a year now, four, 14 months specifically, since I retired at age 58. Uh, I'm rolling up on 60 now, and I don't miss work one bit. I'm finally free. I don't have to get up to an alarm clock, commute to work. Instead, I get to wake up when I feel like it. I get to travel and go on adventures. Uh, I could go for walks at the beach, take my wife to breakfast, instead of getting up and going to work. So I'm kind of living the dream now. I've escaped the 9-to-5 grind, and, uh, you know, I'm here to... Uh, Help others who want to do the same thing. So does this resonate with you? I mean, are, are, are you looking to leave the workforce? If so, let's dig in. Let's get started. So step one, in my opinion, is to start planning now. And I don't care where you're at in your career. Um, you're going to retire at some point unless you want to work till you die. And so the sooner you start planning, the better off you'll be and the more options you'll have. And I want to talk specifically now uh, to my younger viewers for a minute. Uh, I didn't realize this, but I was looking at my analytics, and you know, over a third of my viewers are in their 20s and 30s. And that kind of surprised me because, you know, I'm an old dude who just retired. Um, but I seem to have a pretty good audience in their 20 and 20s and 30s who are looking to do the same thing I did. So, uh, first of all, welcome to my channel, and uh, I hope I have some great advice for you that helps you out. Uh, I, I definitely have done this, so I'm speaking from experience instead of just uh, talking out my ears, so to speak. So I want to tell you something. You have a fantastic opportunity ahead of you. Being that you're in your 20s and 30s, uh, you have way more options and opportunity than people who are my age. And so getting started now is going to give you so many options later. And um, time is on your side, I can tell you that. And if you do the right things now, you're going to be able to retire much earlier than your peers. And you're going to get to enjoy more of your life. That's what I did. I retired at 58. I basically bought back nine years of my life. And those are nine good years. Those are my late, late 50s, early 60s years. You know, Let's face it, when I'm 67, I'm probably not going to be riding dirt bikes and climbing mountain peaks and international travel. So I'm doing that now. And uh, you could do the same thing. And so being young, that's awesome. So at your age, the fire math is much easier and time's on your side. 
If you're older, like I was, you still have time. You know, I started saving when I was 21, but I wasn't, I was 43 when I first dreamed of financial independence. And it took me 15 years, but I pulled it off by 58. If I hadn't have done it when I was 53, I might have woke up in my 50s or even 60s and had no chance at it. So start planning now. The sooner you get started, the better, right? And, and I want to tell you, way back in 2007, um, I was trapped in the rat race, and it sucked. And I knew I was trapped, right? I had no possible way to leave my crappy job and still feed my family. I didn't have an escape plan, but I did have a dream. and I had a financial independent dream. And then I created a goal. And I wish I knew then what I know now. And I'm telling you, because maybe you don't know this, but if I had to do all over again, I would have created a plan to support my dream. And then I would have had a much better compass and an idea of what it would take. So don't be like me. Plan your escape now, and it will be so worth it. Even if it takes you 10 to 15 years to be financially independent, it's going to be worth it. You know, the time's going to pass in your life either way. Whether you're financially independent in 15 years or you're still trapped in the rat race, um, so go for it. Um, don't don't be scared. Um, the sooner you start planning, the more options you'll have. And by the way, I wrote a couple articles about these experiences on my blog way back in 2007, and I'll link to them below because uh, I think you could probably hear the desperation in my in my tone. And uh, if you're at that age and you're at that stage right now, I want you to know that. Uh, um, you know, I was there too, and you can overcome it easily. Okay, one other thing I want to ask you a small favor. If you enjoy my videos and you enjoy my content, please subscribe. Uh, it would help me out a lot. It would help my channel a lot, and uh, it would also ensure that you don't miss any of my future episodes. I always have some kind of a, uh, an adventure and some, uh, some uh, useful advice, so uh, please consider subscribing. All right, thanks a bunch. All right, so let's start with step two, right? Controlling your finances. You know, let's face it. If you don't control your finances, um, basically you're at the whims. You're at the mercy of everything. And so taking control of your finances, even though some people hate to do this, uh, that's really the key. And, and you take control of your finances and then you make them work for you. And I'm going to show you how exactly in just a second. And so this is probably the meat of this whole video right now. So step one is stop buying stuff, right? Nothing keeps you stuck in the rat race like consumerism and debt, right? You know, I was there, trust me. Uh, I had credit card debt. I had a mortgage. Um, it sucked. I was trying to keep an old car alive so I could get to work. So stop buying stuff. Anything that's not useful or not necessary in your life, stop buying the stuff, right? And pay off everything possible, right? Debt's your enemy. Debt is your enemy when you want to become financially independent. It's the exact opposite of becoming financially independent, right? It's being financially dependent on somebody else, a bank specifically, and you pay dearly for that. And the third thing is, and I, I know everybody hates this, but keep a budget, right? Um, anybody who's ever followed my blog knows I hate budgeting, right? So the budget I used, I called it the broke on purpose budget. Right? Instead of writing down all these things and putting them in categories, what I did was I got my paycheck. I paid myself first. I took the first thing I did was put money in my investments right away. Then I paid my bills. And then whatever was left, I lived on it joyously. You know, If I wanted a latte, I had a latte. Uh, if I wanted to go somewhere, I went somewhere. And then if I ran out of money, I hungered down to the next paycheck. So that was my budget. It worked for me. You might... Uh, want to watch your money more carefully, especially if you're overspending and going into debt, you might need to keep a tighter budget. Let's talk about the next thing, and this is also very important, right? Saving and investing, right? So if you ever want to become financially independent, you have to save and invest. And I know everybody knows this, right? But I'm going to tell you specifically why, and hopefully this will help you. So, you know, whether you just put a bunch of money in your 401k, if you don't want to become a master investor and you don't want to become sophisticated, you can literally just stuff a bunch of money in your 401k, uh, maybe some index funds, pick some index funds, and just put money away. You know, 
Uh, you don't have to, you know, understand derivatives and all kinds of stuff to become a successful investor. It's, a, it's actually a lot simpler than you're going to think, right? But I'm going to tell you why you have to learn to invest. So think about this, right? Say you skip your latte, right? And you save $5 a day. You know, Automatic Millionaire tells you this. A lot of different books tell you this. You know, skip the latte and invest the five bucks, right? So you're going to invest five bucks a day, right? I'm sorry, you're going to save five bucks a day. How long do you think it would take you to become a millionaire, right? Bad news. It would take you almost 450 years, right? Um, to become a millionaire, saving five bucks a day. So saving by itself is not very effective for becoming a millionaire. But if you invest the same $5 a day at a 10% return, you'd be a millionaire in only 42 years, right? And that seems like a long time, but by the end of your working career, you'd be a millionaire. And um, I can tell you about it because, you know, that's what I've done. So this is why you need to learn how to both invest and save. You have to do both if you ever want to get ahead financially. Saving alone just won't set you free. So let's talk about these concepts, right? Um, once again, this is a really important part to pay attention to, right? So first of all, the savings rate. I recommend everybody, unless you have some crazy circumstances, that you save at least 10 to 20% of your net income. Your net income is your income after taxes, right? So when you get your paycheck, if it's 1000 bucks, you need to save at least 100 and preferably 200, right? Um, in The Millionaire Next Door, the book, uh, most of the millionaires saved about 20% of their net income. And that's a very realistic amount, even if you don't make a lot of money, um, to reach all your goals. So somewhere between 10 being minimum, 20 being uh, preferable, right? And let me tell you something about your income. This is something most people don't realize. Your income is your greatest asset, right? Most people think their biggest asset is their home or their biggest assets are 401k. And that may be true, but it's most likely not. You know, if you average 100K over a 40-year um, career, you'll make over $4 million. And most likely, if you barely make six figures, you're not going to have a $4 million home or a $4 million 401K. So keep that in mind. Your income is your greatest asset. And if you don't save any of it, if you go your entire working career and you don't keep anything for yourself, you're going to have squandered your biggest asset. And I'll cover a little more about that in a second, right? The next concept is really important is you need to invest for an 8 to 10% return. Um, some people are going to think I'm a little wacky for saying this, but there's some reasons behind it, right? There's two very specific reasons you need to invest for a high return. Especially if you're younger, don't worry about the risk. Invest for a high return. So let me tell you about it. The first is taxes and inflation. People think, oh, yeah, you know, I got a 10% return. Well, no, you didn't. Uh, what happened was you got a 10% return when inflation's probably around 5%, and then you're going to pay taxes on the 10%, right? So you're going to be lucky to get a couple percent out of that. And, and that's the facts. That's the simple math. And don't believe what the government tells you about 3% inflation, that they're full of it. It's probably closer to 4 or 5% over history, uh, recent history at least. So the second thing is what I call doubling, right? And this is a really important concept to understand when you invest, right? Every so many years, your money doubles depending on your interest rate. It's called the rule of 72s, right? So if you get a 10% rate of return, your money will double in 7.2 years, right? If you get a 5% return on your investment, your money will double every 14.4 years. And you may not think that's a big deal, but it is. So let's take an, a working career, like 40-some-odd years, right? If you get a 10% rate of return, your money will double six times, right? And that's the, okay, you have six times as much? No, you have 64 times as much. That original dollar you invested will be 64 times as much, right? So it becomes two, then four, then eight, then 16, then 32, then 64 times what you invested. If you get a 5% rate of return, right? Your money won't go double three times in that same career, and then you'll have eight times as much. So you would get eight times as much at 5% or 64 times as much at 10%. So those are the two reasons you need to invest for a high return. 
whether it's stock market, real estate, whatever, you need to shoot for an 8 to 10% return. Let's talk about one more thing, and this is really important so people don't think about this, right? Um, this is kind of the secret sauce of investing in finances in life, right? And it's converting income to assets, right? It doesn't sound like a big deal, but we're going to go over why you need to invest, right? So I call it the flywheel effect, right? You take some part of your income and you convert it to assets. And by assets, I don't mean things like cars and purses and shoes and clothes, right? I'm talking about income-producing assets like real estate, stocks, collectibles, things of that sort that are going to return money, right? So... All your finances are like a big flywheel, right? And you need to keep pushing that flywheel for it to go spin faster and faster, right? So every bit of money you put into your investments is spinning the flywheel. And then every bit of money your investments or your assets um, return or, or, or earn, that spins the flywheel. So you need to get this flywheel going faster and faster because when you become like me and you retire... All of a sudden, you need to live off the flywheel and you're no longer spinning it. In fact, this flywheel has to spin itself in retirement. And that's what happened for me this year. I lived off my investments all year. And by the end of the year, uh, let's just take last year as an example, the market had gone up and I had more money than when I started. And I lived on it all year without with taking money out and not even putting money in. So to be successful, you need to have your flywheel spin itself. And that takes quite a bit of uh, assets, but that's what you need to do. You need to convert your income to assets, at least 10 to 20%. So let's talk about the next item, having a vision. I, um, you know, this is underrated, but I'm just going to say it uh, anyways, because almost everything I've accomplished in my life, uh, I had a vision for it. And, and I, I made another video about this, so I won't get into a ton of detail on goals and visions. I have two good videos on that. But these two steps have been critical. Everything I've accomplished, first I created a goal. First I had a dream. Then I created a goal, like I had a dream of being financially independent. Then I set a goal. And then even though I didn't have a plan, I actually retired without a plan, which is stupid, don't do that. Um, I visualized it. Way back in 2007, I visualized what it would be like to wake up in the morning and have enough money to live my life um, without having a job. And even though I was so far away from it, it was like a pipe dream. Once I saw that vision, um, that stuck with me and I was able to achieve it. So any lofty goal, um, you're going to need a vision and you're, you're going to need a goal. So don't skip this critical step or your dreams of financial independence could slip away from you. Um, dream big, right? Dream big. And even if you come up short on your goal, you're going to be way ahead. Um, every goal I've had or most of the goals I've had took longer than I expected and there was setbacks. But then I got there. So dream big, swing, swing for the fence. Um, there's a book called The Greatest Salesman, right? And he says, is it not better to aim your spear at the moon uh, at the sun and and strike only an eagle then to aim your spirit an eagle and on strike only a rock so basically dream big and even if you fall short you'll do better here's one last thing i want to cover and this is huge to me so i'm just going to put it out there for you and that is consider severance is there any way you could get a severance package you know if you follow my channel you know i got laid off my last two jobs and I basically closed down one division, and then I closed down my other whole company. So the great news, and by the way, getting laid off sucks. It was very stressful. But the great news is I got some big bonuses and severance packages for doing it, and it helped me out a ton. Um, I worked at this startup for 13 years, so I got 26 weeks of severance pay. That's six months. Uh, and I took that money, and I paid off the loan on my house. I paid off the second. I already had paid off the first. So even though I was unemployed... I, my mortgage was gone. I didn't really have to worry about losing my house or anything else. So if there's any possible way for you to wrangle a severance package for your company instead of quitting, go for it. You know, it's a great way to go out. That's uh, <laughs> If you can get that on the way out, trust me, that's the way to go. All right, let's wrap it up. So in conclusion, 
I just want to tell you, and this is from the bottom of my heart right here, because I've done it, right? Escaping the rat race is possible for most people. I mean, for most people, even working class people like me, I did it on a single income. And, and you could do it too. And I didn't make a ton of money. You know, I made six figures the last, I don't know, quarter of my career. But for most of that time, man, I made in the 20s, 30s, 50s. So it just takes some planning, some vision, a dream, and most important, some discipline, right? And uh, so the real question is, how long would it take you? And what would you have to do to get there? And if you create a simple plan, it will answer those two questions for you and start you on this path. And, and, and I want to tell you all the sacrifice, I promise you this, all the sacrifices that you would make to get there, they'll be worth it. I'm on the far side of it and I can tell you it's all been worth it. So that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, if you want any kind of uh, uh, more detail on any of these concepts, let me know. Um, but I hope that helps you out on your journey to escape the rat race and, uh, and live a life of financial independence. Okay, everyone. Thanks for coming along on the hike. It was a nice hike. Uh, I was worried about my knee. Uh, I injured my knee hiking uh, a couple months ago, but uh, everything worked out really good. Couple couple hours in. Anyways, thanks for coming along. I hope you enjoyed the subject. I wish you all health, happiness, and prosperity in your lives. And uh, we will see you next week on our next big adventure.